Hello everyone, this is Jason from Primetime Aquatics and we're doing something a little bit different today. I haven't been doing Saturday videos in a long time, but a few of you have reached out talking about something I think is kind of breaking news in the aquarium hobby. And I just looked up an article about this subject and that is what is going on with Miramo moss balls that were sold in a number of states. And the problem is some of them have been contaminated with zebra mussels, which is a very invasive organism in the United States and it is something we absolutely want to avoid. So I wanted to take a look at this article real fast, give you a little bit of background and also the nice thing is this article tells us how to deal with things just in case we are concerned. And so what we have here is an article from uh, reeftoforest.com. I will put the link for this article in the description below if you want more information. But this is a zebra mussel that we can see right here. And these things, like I said, they're invasive. And it's something I know I live in the state of Illinois and you see signs on certain in certain lakes where you can't do any boating or canoeing because the likelihood that zebra mussel spread from one body of water to another can be a problem. And so we're trying to avoid it. Now what's happened is apparently there was a distributor in the Ukraine who sent some Miramo moss balls to California. And then a California distributor distributed those moss balls to a number of different states and they have been found to be contaminated. So as we look through this article, we can see here as of Friday evening, which this was just yesterday, if you're watching this today when I first release it, news reports added uh, North Carolina and South Carolina pet retailers to the list of locations where zebra mussel infestations have been confirmed. And so we're going to take a closer look then, okay, what, where are we looking in terms of the states that might have been impacted? Washington and Oregon, uh, as well as Montana and Florida. And now we're adding North and South Carolina. There's also been some uh, un un uncovered confirmed findings in Georgia, Idaho, Wyoming, and Virginia, uh, which have been added to the list of states where contaminated moss balls have been found. So it looks like the list of states are growing. We're going to talk about what to do about that. If you just recently purchased a moss ball or you're thinking about it, what you can do about that. And if you know somebody who's in the aquarium hobby, this would be a great video to share with them. Share it as far as you can, just because we want to try to avoid this becoming a problem. As you know, we're in the fish keeping hobby and one of the things that we want to do is really present the hobby in a responsible manner. We don't want to be dumping pet fish into waterways and have problems like they're having in Florida with all kinds of invasive fish now or plecos in Arizona. And it can just be a real issue. So we really don't want to add to this problem. And so the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service has set up a web page in response to this problem. Their mandate is strict. Destroy, don't dump. Again, this link will be in the article in the description below. Here you can see a picture of a zebra mussel that was confirmed on a moss ball at a pet store in Georgia. And so you can see that here, kind of what they look like. And again, as we scroll up, you can see here, this is what we're looking for, at least in terms of the adult zebra mussels. Now, the problem is they can be very, very small when they are uh, in the larval stage. You might, you probably won't notice them. And so we, at this point, if you've recently gotten a moss ball, and you're especially in one of these states, you almost want to assume that it was contaminated just to be on the safe side uh, because this can really mess some things up. And so here we see in red letters, it is paramount that anyone who has recently purchased moss balls considers that they are likely contaminated and take appropriate steps. And we're going to go over those steps as we kind of scroll down here. And again, I don't want to make this video really long. Uh, so Let's go ahead and scroll down. What do we do? So if you recently purchased a moss ball and you are concerned, here we have some guidelines as to how we can deal with that. And so first thing, we recommend that you take the following steps with all moss ball aquatic plant products. Uh, decontaminate the moss ball. And this is if you suspect that you've, if you've recently purchased one, this thing should not be going in your tank. So decontaminate the moss ball using one of the following methods to ensure that the disposal method you choose is in compliance with state laws and animal welfare regulations. So one, place the moss ball into a sealed plastic bag, freeze for at least 24 hours. Now that's a very simple thing to do. Very simple, very safe. There are other options or place the moss ball in boiling water for at least one full minute or submerge the moss ball in chlorine bleach diluted with, to one cup of bleach per gallon of water or submerge the moss ball in diluted white vinegar for 20 minutes. Again, the freezing thing, it's safe, especially if you've got uh, younger people around the house who, you know, the moss ball might be part of their tank. 
the freezing thing is probably the easiest thing to do. Uh, once step two is complete, place the moss ball in any of its and any of its packaging in a sealed plastic bag and dispose in the trash. In other words, we don't want the moss balls winding up in waterways. Uh, if vinegar, boiling water, or bleach was used, that liquid can be disposed down a household drain, never down a storm drain where it could enter and damage local waterways. Okay, now what happens if you accidentally, or, or you just didn't know, and you put the moss ball in the aquarium? Things become a little bit bigger of a pain at this point, unfortunately. And so what they're recommending you do, because again, if the larval stages of the zebra mussels are in the tank, you're probably not going to see them. So basically, I'm going to take the short, short version of this. I won't read it step by step, but they're recommending that you remove all your fish and put them in a separate container. That can be a plastic tote. Make sure you run dechlorinated tap water in, or you know, put tap water in the tote, dechlorinate it run an air stone, make sure they've got airflow, and you're going to put the fish in that plastic tote to basically clean the tank. All right, so that's what pretty much all of these first, this, this big step one is. Now, they then go on to recommend to sterilize your aquarium. And this is going to cause some stress for us if you recently purchased a moss ball, because essentially what you're going to be doing is destroying the cycle. And you've got, you had a full ecosystem of fish. And we're going to talk about that in a second. So sterilize the contaminated aquarium by adding a quarter teaspoon of bleach for each gallon of water. Let the water sit for 15 minutes and then dispose of the sterilized water down a household drain. Clean the aquarium and accessories using one of the following methods, ensuring that the disposal method you choose is in accordance with manufacturer recommendations. So for tank decorations, they don't really in here, well, they did talk about substrate. We'll get to that in a second, and that's going to be a bleaching solution. Uh, you can use a boiling method. Use water that is 140 degrees uh, Fahrenheit to flush and coat the tank with all necessary surfaces. I don't like this. I don't think it's necessarily a safe thing to do. So I, I you can use step one, but you've got to be so careful when you're dealing with boiling water. Uh, the second one, disinfection method, is probably a safer way to go make a disinfection solution of one third cup of bleach per gallon of water soak aquarium substrate rocks decor and filter media in the bleach water for 15 minutes rinse off all items pr prior to setting up the aquarium now re-establishing a tank here's where you're gonna have a problem of course they're telling you that you've got to sterilize your filter your filtration you have to sterilize your substrate you have to sterilize all of the decorations you have to sterilize the aquarium now you've got exactly zero beneficial bacteria the issue here is going to be that you are absolutely going to get an ammonia spike if you've had a full community of fish. My recommendation, they are channel sponsors. If you want to find a different source, find a different source. But either I would strongly recommend if you've got a full tank with all your inhabitants, you're going to need something like a Fritzheim Turbo Start. They have beneficial bacteria. It's live beneficial bacteria. You really need to make sure whatever it is you buy, that it is live nitrifying bacteria, not just a starter juice that doesn't actually contain the microbes because you're going to wind up for sure an ammonia spike. So yes, this is bad news. Yes, it stinks. Yes, if you put a moss ball in your aquarium recently in the last week or so, you're probably going to have a potential issue. But we really want to deal with it because if you wind up with a zebra mussel infestation in your tank, those things get all over the place. They're going to clog up your filtration. They're going to cause all kinds of problems for your home plumbing potentially. So we just need to make sure we jump on this right away and not ignore it. So if you've recently purchased a moss ball, and especially if you live in one of these states, you might want to consider doing this. I know it's going to be a pain if you wind up with ammonia spikes or nitrite spikes. We have videos on how to deal with that, but I can't stress it enough to avoid that as much as you can try to use a nitrifying bacteria when you restart everything. So again, I just wanted to bring that out there. I will put the link for this article down in the description below. I highly recommend read it. Highly recommend pass this article or pass the video off to anybody who knows in the aquarium hobby who might have re recently purchased a moss ball just so that we're on the safe side. I will see you next week and I hope you have a good weekend.